Ladies and gentlemen, I have an urgent and a shocking Toad XJ update. The battery tray area is completely intact. Incredible. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome back to the project here with the Toad. Once again, episode five, I think it's five episodes of the Toad so far. This thing is coming along really nicely and I gotta catch you guys up. Look at this, we got a front bumper on her already. And uh, oh yeah, let's check out the engine bay. The battery compartment, oh, this thing was impressive. Check her out guys. We got the frame of the battery tray in just about perfect condition. Look at these studs, look at these threads. This is not how I'm used to looking at these things. This is what I have grown accustomed to working on Northeast XJs. The big reveal. Oh, rot. <laughs> Look at that big rot hole. Yep. That seems about right. Hello. But here on the toad, it is looking nice, good, and clean. I even have the factory nuts to these studs down here they are intact the flange is still intact a lot of the times the flange breaks off and then what you have left is just weird looking nuts yeah they were weird looking so what i did was cleaned up this whole area when i took off the battery tray this uh this stud was broken off that happens a lot too but the good part is you can drill this out this is a stud that is welded right through the frame of the Jeep. There's the second one and the third one. Since it was broken off, I just drilled right through the stud from the top down. Then I tapped my hole with this. This is an M8 by 1.25 pitched threads. What you do is you drill a hole. This is a great set. It's got an eight millimeter drill bit and it's perfectly paired with the M8 size tap. So I use this set, drill a nice hole through here. Actually, I made my initial hole with, I think, a 3 16 So I pre-drilled first with a smaller size, then I ran the M8, then I tapped the threads. And wouldn't you know, the perfect size bolt for this application is this. It is a Torx bit from a Jeep XJ. Pop quiz time. Do you know where you can harvest a T40 Torx bolt that is M8 and has 1.25 pitch threads? I believe you'd find it in the R section. No, 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 not in the R's. That's not what your mother said. XJ's have those specific bolts right over here. <laughs> there you go. XJ door hinge bolts. It's the perfect length perfect pitch and perfect diameter to go ahead and screw yourself screw yourself don't say it dan don't say it to uh, apply a new factory chunk of jeep metal that works perfectly for your uh, your battery tray wow there we go so that battery tray area is completely restored and while we're in the front Let's see, what do we got here? I think I showed you this, guys. This was uh, busted off, and what else? This guy, this guy ended up breaking off when I was adjusting this frame. Ooh, let me show you the frame. Just as promised, I welded in a patch of frame, and this huh, fits perfectly because it's factory XJ frame. So it came out all right, I guess. It was straight enough, straight enough to pinch all three of these pieces now nice and straight. I got the bumper bracket on, factory bumper fasteners, and factory clips right in there. They held together so far. Usually they break in half, but these were these were all right. I uh, got myself another factory fastener right here, 10 millimeter, to attach this weird triangle thing on it. Don't know what it's called. It's probably a fender support. I call it the triangle thingy. And uh, yeah, there we go. Little touch-up paint added to the uh, to the little side when I did the front bumper. Now that's the right stuff. Done. Just kidding. That came out great, looking really sharp. Also, we have this side over here, touched up nicely. 
Of course, inside under the air box, I touched it up as well. Uh, the same thing applied to this hole. However, the air box, this air box has the same thread pitch, same diameter, and just about the same size bolts, but I wanted to get myself uh, matching bolts. So I found these, they're a little longer than the factory air box bolts, but they'll be all right. And deep down inside is some nice newly tapped threads. So that is looking good. That should do it for this engine bay area. I'm gonna have to take all the coolant out. I think I'm gonna pull this lower rad hose so I could get a good look at these power steering lines. Did not address that yet, but that's coming up real soon. And also, I retapped this guy. What else? Uh, retapped this guy, and I think this also. These are all the same pitch threads. These are M6 by one. Now you could get yourself like packs of these. Over time, you can save these up. You could get them on Amazon as individuals. Sometimes you could get them as small sets. And other times you could get them as big sets. I think I'm ready for a new set. These are very well used. Oh, these aren't. These are, oh yeah, these are my metrics. Uh, there's a broken one or a missing spot where I broke one. Hence the, uh, the new individual one from Amazon. So there we go. Set complete. But yeah, tap and die sets are great. You could fix a multitude of Jeep issues with a good tap and die set. If you're going to get one, I recommend a metric. So frame is taken care of. Bumper is back on. Bumper is painted. Engine bay is touched up. The wheels are on. Yeah. Front wheels are on with the lift in place. That is good. I think I showed you that last time. Also, uh, we took the diff fluid out and check the differential, that is good to go. So um, yeah, I ended up lifting it and I put my beautiful new track bar in. Track bars are great, for, well, this one's great from Rough Country because it's adjustable at this collar. If I need to adjust the position of the axle under the vehicle, all you gotta do is loosen up those clamps, rotate that sleeve, and I could adjust it left or right. So if you've never put a track bar on a Jeep before, the best way to do it is just simply save it for last. Put the lift in, drop the sucker down at ride height, tighten all your bushings, and then you could go put your track bar in. Uh, this should center itself. It should sit nicely if you lifted it evenly. It should just sit nicely right underneath the Jeep, nice and on center. And then you can, what you could do is you could measure the bolt holes from the frame of the track bar bracket uh, to where it mounts in that little track bar hole right over there. Measure the distance on center from top to bottom and then you know how to extend or shorten the track bar. So lift your vehicle, drop it down on its tires, give it a nice little wiggle side to side, let it settle and then you can measure the distance of the holes. You could also, I think I showed this in a post lift procedure video, get a nice little hang down going. What you're gonna do is tape a string that has a weight and this will uh, come down right here and you can measure the distance between the string and uh, whatever it is you have hanging down on your hang down and make sure that side is even with this side. And uh, yeah. That's it. Simple, simple stuff. It's centered and looking really good. So, moving on. All right. This, there's like a little damage in here. It's a little dent, so I tapped it back in, sanded it, hit it with some touch-up paint, clean this area up. That's looking good. The other side, mm, that still bothers me. It's more, more than ever because everything else is looking good. I'll have to do something. I'll just have to. <laughs> anyway, I got this bracket on. Used 3 sixteenths all steel rivets. Made a little tape line and then painted everything. Painted it all to match. Assembled it. And now these rear bumper ends will slide right on. Nice and neat. 
first. First I should reattach this though. Ah, I hate these things. I hate them, but I love them. I think they look the best. The factory fender flares look better than all the other crap out there, in my opinion. So don't chop them. Keep them. We could fix this. We could do it together, guys. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Coming around. Uh, uh, engine good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still got to do this guy. Where is it? There it is. I still got to fix the battery ground. Air box check. We still have to do the sway bar. I might make a full feature length video of how to put a sway bar on. Rear sway bar, very, very, very underrated. These things do an acceptable job at improving the road handling of your XJ. Uh, here's the battery tray. I got a complete battery tray. Look at this. It even has its original rubber stoppers for the, the little attachments, battery attachments. It's fantastic. Love it. Uh, I think this was from my two-door, so looking good. We'll get that in. Got the battery temperature sensor. Don't forget to plug this back in. Uh, air box. Yeah, pretty, pretty simple stuff. We're on cruise control. I think the hardest part I'm going to have to do now is paint these suckers. All uh, the bumper ends are... Now they were in bad shape, so I sanded them down, used some Bondo, sanded some more... Use some primer, sanded some more, more primer, so on and so forth, filling all these little holes. As you can see, we got a lot of gnats out. Man, these gnats suck. They kept landing in my clear coat. Not so much when I resprayed the what is this? The header panel. We got a, we got a new header. Well, no, we didn't get a new better. I resprayed the header panel the correct paint. This is. Uh, PS5 Silverstone Metallic. It is not PS2 Bright Silver. That's WJ color. This is XJ color. So that came out awesome. Look at it. Look at it. It's beautiful. Also got the... Oh, a little sticky. Got the headlight doors in. That's nice. Headlight bezels looking good. So, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you this. Tell you a little tip on this. If you can see this little guy, this little some bitch, landed in my clear coat. But rather than trying to scrape it off and messing up everything, you just let it dry, guys. It sucks, I know, but let it dry, and then you could gently sand it out and buff it out rather than trying to fix a whole fingerprint gouge in a wipe. Uh, this this is gonna look a lot better than if I wiped it in like panic mode. So. I just bit my tongue and took it and continued painting. This shine is all just Home Depot Rust-Oleum clear coat. And it looks good. Check this out, guys. Here is the grill. This was in decent condition, but it had a really nasty gouge here and one other gouge here. Ah, come to think of it, I probably should have fixed this little nick when I had the chance. But what I did was I, I absolutely hate masking out all of these uh, little vents all these grills and, and it's just it takes so long to get it on this ridge just right it drives me crazy so what i did was i taped off this part i taped off this part i sanded and fixed this area right here that needed to be touched up and then i used the paint touch up right over here where it needed it tried to blend it as best i could while still masking the black off only in one section so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to clear up this little bit of overspray on the corners and get everything all really good and clean. And then I'm just going to clear coat the whole thing and hopefully it uh, blends nicely. Don't know if it's going to work, but uh, definitely going to give it a shot. It's better than masking out all these individual sections. If you guys have done that, you'll know how much it sucks and you could put in hours of masking and it still might not turn out right <laughs> still have some overspray but yeah that is the grill and i think that's pretty much it that's enough to complete the nose of this bad boy um i gotta look up to see where i put all my, oh jeez, i gotta look up to see where i put all my lenses i got lenses somewhere maybe i'll tint them a little bit with nightshade not sure yet but uh Hey, it's possible. Let me know if you want to see me tint a taillight lens. I'll show you what I did 
with the commander over here. There we go. That's a night shaded tinted commander tail light. Came out good. All right, guys, there we have the toad. That's going to do it for episode five. Still chipping away at it. Hope you like the way it's sitting. Let me know if you like that lift. Let me know if your XJ is lifted. How high did you go? Did you keep it factory looking? This is just three inches, just about three inches on 30s. And uh, I, I love it. That's the perfect stance for me. Reminds me of Black Beauty. Thank you again, Black Beauty. This is the perfect XJ. Yeah, she was something. She really was the perfect XJ. But hey, I'm making more perfect XJs all in good time. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it. Remember to like, subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching. Share, comment below, all that good stuff. And I will catch you guys on the next project. Peace. When you get an XJ, you gotta look at all the little things, like this. <laughs>